Okay, so today on the show we have Aaron, who's on the education team at Airtable. Welcome, Aaron. Hey Ben, good to hear. Good to hear from you. Yeah, you too. How uh, do you want to introduce yourself briefly and uh, tell people who you are and and what you're doing? Yeah, sure. Uh, so my name is Aaron Kornblit. I'm part of the education team at Airtable. Uh, before joining Airtable, I guess my my claim to fame is uh, the essential guide to Airtable, uh, which I launched about a roughly over a year ago. And I uh, was part of the the MakerPad team for a little bit as well. And um, more generally kind of uh, been doing a lot of tutorials and, and helping in folks in the no code space uh, learn how to kind of automate all the things. Yeah. You said automate all the things. Is that like that's your, is that your newsletter or like a side thing? I saw you recently did the, the website uh, redone, right? Yeah, I guess um, automate all the things is is everything that doesn't fit into a job or or something like that. So um, maybe a little backstory there would be interesting. Essentially, how the, how this all started. I I I never set out to be a tutorial maker or uh, a no coder. Um, actually, how it all started was. Um, I'm in Montreal and, and none of my friends work in, in the tech world and, and I'd be working with startups for a couple of years and I, and I realized that all of my friends spend a bunch of time on manual stuff. Uh, so they had no idea how Excel worked. Uh, so, so the backstory is actually my, my, my roommate asked me, you know, how can I calculate the number of days between two dates? And I was like, oh, you, like, you use an Excel sheet. And he's like, I've never heard of this Excel you speak of. Um, and you'd spend hours every week, um, you know, calculating the number of days to, to, to not blow a, a legal deadline. And, um, so I started doing these things where I'd invite people, uh, and invite friends essentially to my house and show them how to automate things. And they'd submit issues that they were having, if you will. And, and we'd have dinner and I would show them a few tools. Um, and I would call them automate all the thing dinners. Um, and, um, you know, after the dinner, a lot of people would say, Hey, you know, I, I, I love this tool that you showed. Could you give us a little more, uh, a little more resources? And so I would record these like snippets, uh, and, you know, I'd be showing Airtable all the time. And finally, you know, I kept showing it, showing it. And people said, Hey, can you like give us a, a full tour of Airtable? And I said, okay, well, I'll record it for everyone. And that's how the essential guide to Airtable uh, came out. Uh, okay. So it's that's why it's always called automate all the things. Nice. How uh, did you also have to cook the dinners when you did those? No, everyone would chip in fifteen bucks, and we'd uh, we'd order sushi because then it was actually like quite quite involved because I would have like this this custom presentation uh, for the kind of issues that people would submit. I took this very seriously. Yeah. Um, and, and people were quite excited about it. Uh, it was definitely weird. It's like, Hey, come to this dude's house. Uh, and you know, he's going to talk to you about tech tools for a couple of hours, but, um, you know, uh, people seem to like it and, and I definitely enjoyed it as well. Yeah. I, I, I like that idea. It seems I don't think I've heard of any, like any previous backstory or anyone's sort of first steps into the tech world is to do with getting people to your house and doing like a presentation in your own living room and eating sushi. But I quite like that. <laughs> Different, right? Yeah. Well, who would have thought that it would lead to, to uh, uh, being on a podcast with you? So uh, definitely the world works in mysterious ways. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. You said that no, uh, you didn't set out to become a tutorial maker or a no coder. I think that's probably true for most, if not all of the people who, are tutorial makers or mm -hmm. no code makers. Um, so when when people sort of said about this, like, can you show me more of Airtable stuff? Was there any courses out there at the, at the time, or did you just think I just want to do my own version because I know what I'm doing? And like, isn't it like doing a course is often seems a lot less daunting than it actually is when you do it? Like. Mm -hmm. You and I both know about recording a video for anything, even if it's like one topic, 
people think it's I think it's a lot simpler than it is, but it's really really not right. Yeah. Um you know, I, I would say so, so I, I don't want to put myself in the bucket of people who knew what they were doing and I still wouldn't necessarily put myself in, in that bucket. Um, you know, I, I, I definitely never, I never viewed it as, Oh, you know, what's out there. Um, and obviously there, there, there was a lot of content out there on Airtable. Um, Airtable has always had a very, um, vibrant community then part of those are content creators and so i did look around and saw hey it seems to be some interesting content and um when i set out to do the course really it was kind of like would this work would this be interesting i was surprised when people signed up to be honest like i'm still surprised when people sign up i i, I people seem to enjoy it which is you know uh, um uh, amazing and, and and it's great like i love when people reach out and say that it's helped them in some way um, but really, you know, mine, it was a personal challenge. Uh, and I had this, this, this small community of people who had come to these dinners who were probably already interested in that course. And so, um, you know, I could always fall back on them and say, Hey, is this valuable to you at least? Um, and I think it, it definitely seems daunting and it definitely felt daunting. Um, but frankly, you know, the, the setup was quite um, small. I, I recorded it on my Mac. I used Camtasia. Um, I, I had a script and, you know, I, I just kind of went with my gut as to what I thought people would, you know, struggle with. And that's it. So it, it was definitely a lot of work, uh, especially just feeling comfortable with, was the main challenge. Um, but, um, I, I, I didn't do much research. I, I kind of went with it and said, you know, if this just dies, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, 10 people who came to my dinners who might watch it till the end, that'd be great. That'd be, you know, I'd be happy with that outcome. Um, yeah. the, the one, the, the one I have now is, is much more exciting, definitely, but it was definitely not expected. And so is there a new version of the air table course you have now than what that one was or? Uh, frankly, not really. It's very similar to what it was. I've been, based on the feedback, editing a few parts, cutting out uh, some sections. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's held up pretty well. Yeah. Um, and, and definitely there's a bunch of new Airtable stuff over the last year, uh, scripting block and just a bunch of other blocks, um, more uh, niche functionality that I would love to cover. Um, that's, that's now a lot of my job. Uh, so, um, but no, actually that, that structure, initial structure held up pretty well. Uh, so it was quite exciting, uh, that people even a year on are still kind of, uh, mainly watching things that I built in January last year. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, we'll get on to some of the, the air table specific stuff mm -hmm. that you're doing, um, a bit later on, but I think, um, You've done a lot of live streams and I've seen you, you tweeted like oh, I'm doing a live stream here, there and everywhere. And you just sort of feel quite comfortable on a live stream. Whereas I think I'm like, mm, not sure what the fuck I'm doing here. Um, how do you no. like do that? I wonder if, which is more natural, which was more natural? Was it like the course thing? And then you thought, well, I just want to do this a bit more interactively with live stuff. Or was it just both a test? Do you feel more comfortable in one setting over the other or? Yeah, um, great question. So um, I think I've thought about this. So it's gonna sound really terrible, but the main value for me of a live stream is that it forces you to create content in a defined amount of time. So if I go live for 30 minutes, I know that at the end of that 30 minutes, I have a 30 minute like content piece. Right. And, you know, when you're creating pre-recorded stuff, people have the expectation of a high level of quality in terms of the way you speak, the actions that you do on the screen. Um, and unfortunately, they don't kind of allow for mistakes. And I actually think mistakes are probably where people learn the most. Uh, so watching people going through the issues and struggles of building. And so a live stream actually combines both 
what I think is an easy way to create content. And that's not the main value that I get from it, but it's that um, you can actually see someone build, see the mistakes that they're making, and most importantly, see how they fix those mistakes. Um, where in pre-recorded, if I send you something that isn't live and there's a mistake in it, and I'm like looking through documentation, you, you would feel that's weird because you would just cycle through. Um, so live content was a kind of this mix for me of um, easy to create. It forced me to, to, to create content every week, and especially as someone who works full time and has, a, has always had a job while doing this, um, it, it created a steady stream of output. And I also feel like for those who would come and listen through the whole thing, it was actually a better learning experience. Um, so I'm personally a huge fan of, of live, um, both from a host perspective, but also from uh, a way to learn. Um, namely, like I, I definitely changed the way I would live stream. If you go to the initial ones, it was like an hour and a half and I'd be by myself. Um, and you know, just, you could feel that it was a struggle for me to get to the end. So it's definitely not what you want. Um, and so, you know, those kind of 40 to 45 minute sessions where, you know, I know that I'm going to get through it, but there are some parts where it's a little tricky. I might not put the right parameter and I actually go through how would I fix that issue live, um, from, from, from folks joining, um, that's really been, um, a, a good way for them to learn. So I'm, I'm, I really like live streams in terms of building. Um, but you know, no code lends itself well to that format because you know, you can get a lot done in 45 minutes, right? So if you're going to three, four five hours, like if, as a host, I can't, I can't talk and work for three, five hours. Uh, cause after two, it'd be really boring. And you know, you want to get to something tangible and useful within, you know, the time that people are joining. So no code actually, I think, um, lends itself very, very well to that format because in 45 minutes I can create a pretty cool process. Um, especially that I've prepared it before. Um, so, so I actually find live stream to be a really good format that I'm hoping to like it's, it's a lot of my job now. So it's really fun to, to it's, it's, we don't call them live streams, but they are essentially live streams. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, um, I've, I've had huge fun with it. So, uh, and that's, that's most important thing, right? Ultimately, yeah. like if I enjoy doing it, I will keep doing it and that'll lend itself to, to better content. And, you know, for folks who don't like it, well, you know, they can go to that pre-recorded YouTube stuff. There's no lack of that, uh, out there in the world. Yeah, and I think it's a good point of like if you enjoy doing it, people are going to know like you're going to enjoy watching it more than you know that someone's going through all the like here's this piece now there's this piece there's this piece. Yeah. When I think I, I I get the question a lot around you know I want to create content or I want to you know be part of the the no code community and I think. And they say, how, how did you start or, or how do you do it? And ultimately, you know, for me, it's always been, do I enjoy creating that type of content? Uh, whether, you know, it's my long form newsletter or these live streams. Um, whenever I don't like doing something, I stop doing it, especially because I don't get paid. Right. So it's not like yeah. someone, you know, so I'm, I'm putting it out in the world for free. So if I'm not enjoying doing it, why would I keep doing it? Um, and also because it creates a, a virtuous cycle where if I enjoy doing it, I want to get better at it. And if some people enjoy it, well, as I get better at it, we'll find more and more people who enjoy it. And frankly, you know, I don't, I don't never want to have this large viewer base. I, I'm really excited by the fact that there are maybe a few people out there who really, really enjoy this stuff. Um, and, and that's always been the people I, I get feedback from and say, Hey, you know, what, what are you want to learn? Like, what are some of the tools that you're struggling with? Um, and you know, that smaller, very interested base, um, you know, for me has been really beneficial in terms of improving the type of content, uh, and, and just being more useful, I guess, or, or, and still having fun. Yeah, I think it's really interesting that you talk about the like, making mistakes 
not that you mean to make the mistakes, but like making mistakes and then showing how you fix them is, is a huge piece of the learning. And yeah, with, I think it, it would probably, it lends itself well to no code because it's so visual. Um, and actually, yeah, I think I've seen some live streams or some posts at the end where you're saying, oh, sorry, we didn't manage to figure it out. <laughs> like you just yeah, like, that happened. Well, bit. so, so, okay. For everyone who has enjoyed one of my live streams that actually only happened once. Um, and, and, and yeah, no, that's fine. It's fine. It's actually a really interesting story. Um, so, uh, I was trying to do the Substack clone. Um, and I think it was like live stream number six or, or it was still, I would say in the relatively early days where I hadn't, uh, figured out the amount of preparedness I needed to do. So essentially you want to be prepared, but not too prepared. So it's not like a 10 minute live stream where you get everything right. Um, and so I was definitely on the unprepared side, uh, unfortunately. And so I was going through and I, I couldn't get this member stack web flow thing to work. Like I had the, the first part, uh, but these were in the days where I was doing them really long. And then, um, so I'm trying to get it done. I'm trying to, it's not working. And then Duncan, the actual founder of member stack or the, one of the co-founders of member stack is in the chat and Duncan's like, Oh, I know what the issue is. Um, so I was like, oh, great. Can you like come on the stream with me and fix it? Um, and then so, so Duncan actually came on on Zoom. We shared our screen and I worked through the issue. And this is like, it's like an hour and 15 minutes into the stream. And we start chatting and I start asking him questions around member stack um, and, and, you know, what he's thinking and what the future looks like for him. And um, I think there were like two people watching by this point. And um, it seemed like those two people were really interested in the discussion that we were having around member stack. Um, and so, so although we, we technically didn't get to the end of, uh, um, you know, uh, of that stream or of that build, uh, I had a ton of fun chatting to Duncan and, and this was before, uh, no code conf. So we actually met at no code conference and, and this is actually how I, I met Duncan. Um, so, so yeah, there, there was a silver lining to that stream, both to myself and, and to Duncan and, and to people who came live. So I think the despite not getting to the end of that uh live stream i think it was fun for everyone who joined yeah no definitely i think and yeah just to clear it up it was only the ones i uh i, did I mean that. we came we came very close to not not having like you know it, it, there's that sense of you're building something live and it's not working and you start sweating and you're like oh am i ever going to get through this um and, and it's funny because a few people wrote uh, to me after and they, they they enjoy those moments so they know it like they enjoy seeing me sweat on stream which i don't know what that says about them yeah um, I'm <laughs> like i i would definitely not like seeing some dude um you know just someone struggling through uh getting it through. yeah it's definitely stressful it's not for everyone uh <laughs> there's definitely a few times where i was like i'm not sure we're gonna get through this one you know um yeah. But but so far I think we've been okay. Yeah, and people okay. go on a journey. People go on a journey with you, right? So that's what people are, are interested in. Whether it's a company that they're early in and they follow the journey of that company, or it's like the people behind there and and that sort of stuff. So yeah, I think it's good to to show some vulnerabilities, whether you mean it or not. Um, and yeah, you mentioned in your intro that you helped um, us with some stuff. You did some tutorials for us, and then. You are now working at one of our close partners, which is Airtable. So how, how did that all happen? Did they, did you ping them your course and say, Hey, look, I've done this. Or did you apply for anything? What happened there? Yeah, it would, it would be a great story if I just reached out to them and said, Hey, I've got this course. And they were like, Oh my God, that's so amazing. Please join Airtable. But that's <laughs> not at all how it happened. Um, you know, um, no, I, I, I knew someone who knew someone who worked at Airtable um, and then I applied online just like uh, everybody else uh, and then went through the interview process and um, you know the essential guide to Airtable was definitely something that seemed interesting you know from from their perspective but definitely wasn't the driving force um, uh, around me joining the team. It's definitely now that I'm part of the education team, that experience definitely helps. Yeah. Um, but, you know, more broadly, I think if I, you know, I was writing about this this week, like I think there is no better place for uh, folks who want to have an impact 
and who aren't necessarily entrepreneurs in the no code world, they should be looking to join no code um, companies, you know, and especially in this time that there, I'll say we, but we're all hiring, whether that's Airtable or uh, Parabola, MemberStack, Zapier, Webflow, all have, you know, very need a lot of uh, people to join. Um, and I, I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend the content route. Like it, that's not what, what, what helped. I, it, it, I think the interest behind creating uh, content is, is what a lot of no code companies will, will value. And I think companies generally, if you join a company and you're already interested in what they do, that's amazing. That'll definitely put you ahead of a lot of people who, um, you know, are just kind of opportunistically applying to places. So, um, but, you know, for me, joining Airtable, um, you know, wasn't tied to the essential guide to Airtable. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting you've mentioned about the content roots. I think it's like, you've got to be curious in these tools. So if you ever want to be part of like work there or even to get anything done with these tools, you've got to be somewhat curious. And I think there's, there's people in the, in the MakeBug community that, like really insane at figuring stuff out like putting stuff together saying this is how you do this thing but will never jump on a video to explain how to do it because they just don't like that i was probably more in that camp where when i first did videos it was just like it was a silent movie my face wasn't even yeah. on it like nothing it was just like i may as well have just written it out by hand and had it on there okay like, i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna say what everyone is thinking your videos were terrible. I think they were just yeah. like, here's cool. a bunch of text and like Ben is too shy to turn on his camera yeah. and you know, um, but I think frankly, like that's an example, right? So your, your goal was to teach people, um, you know, how, how to build without writing code. Uh, it wasn't to, to, to do tutorials, right? And so MakerPad is, is a manifestation of that. And ultimately, you know, I think, um, the, that, that underlying interest is what's important. Um, and, and I think ultimately you're kind of coming back to my initial point of like, whatever you enjoy doing, that's what you should keep doing. Um, yeah. uh, and if you don't enjoy, you know, I, I don't necessarily enjoy going on, on camera and, and, and filming and things. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's a big part of what the, the outcome that I want. So that's a part of it. Um, but yeah, just, yeah, your videos were, were awful, but they still worked, right? Uh, Cause yeah. they were unique. Uh, their content was unique. You had a community around it. And then ultimately you found the people to, to, to who are better than you. And, and I think that's, uh, yeah. uh, that's more important and that's the most important part. Yeah, for sure. And actually I find it interesting that of all the people who I speak to, whether they're at other no-code companies um, doing content, doing tutorials, I don't even know if it is like, Hey, I enjoy the process of making a video, <laughs> scripting it, writing, like doing the video, making sure my mouse moves really smoothly. Like some people are really right. picky with stuff, stuff like that. And the person who's listening will know who I'm shouting out there. Like there's things like that, that sometimes it's just like part of the job that you want to do. But I think it's what you said is it's the outcome of it, right? You, you know, that when you do this, hundreds, maybe thousands of people, will be able to like see this thing and replicate that themselves. And you're like, no code is so big and there's so many things you can do, but so, so untouched in that there's like, you've got to show people a lot of these things and like, being able to enable other people to do that is, is such a powerful tool. What is the, um, you said you're on the education team at Airtable. So what is the stuff that you do when you mentioned about live streams, but not quite called live streams. What, what is the sort of the role you have there? Yeah. Um, so on, on the education team, we've been thinking and how, how do you educate um, just users, right? And so Airtable has a huge user base in, I think, just more generally applicable to uh, everyone, you know, whether you're no code company or just an educator in general, how do you um, touch people in different parts of their learning experience, right? Um, in, in you have people who are, who just want information on the super nitty gritty and then people who are like, I've never touched a no code tool or, or Airtable specifically in my life. And can you 
can you walk me through it? Um, so how, what we've been working on recently um, is what we're calling live builds. So essentially 45 minutes uh, will help you build a CRM project tracker, uh, product management roadmap, things like that. And, and going from zero to what feels like a semi built out base. Uh, well, it's, it's fully built out, uh, but it's not something that you could scale to like 200 people, but it definitely feels like a good starting point in uh, 45 minutes. Um, so that's been one type of content uh, that we've been, uh, um, you know, creating. Um, the other uh, that I'm working on right now is is around uh, remote webinars. Um, so I don't know when this podcast will come out, whether we'll still be doing them, uh, but you can find all of them at airtable.com slash webinars. Um, so really, I think more generally, and, and it's funny because I've spoken to folks at Webflow, folks at Parabola around education. And um, it's not easy. It's not an easy challenge because you have uh, tools that can be incre incredibly complex, uh, but that can also be very simple. And you want to try to reach as many of these people with the resources that you have. Uh, so whether it's top of the funnel folks who are like, hey, I've never built a, a parabola recipe or I've never created a zap. And then you have people who are just care about like, I want to do a multi-reference field in Webflow from Zapier, right? Yeah. Um, and then you're trying to um, guide people along both of those paths or, or in different parts of their path. So it's, and, and then you have to like actually create interesting content, right? So it's not only about what do we talk about, who do we talk about, but how do we actually make it interesting? So um, opposed to like before where I would just be in my room and be like, oh, I think people, you know, struggle with this part because I struggled with it, you know, two weeks ago and it might be the most niche thing ever. And obviously the no code community is going to love it because no niche stuff, you know, people love. Um, yeah. It's been a, a, a huge shift in terms of thinking, um, how do we, how do we, you know, create interesting, compelling education formats that are efficient? Um, and that that you know reach the right people where they're struggling uh, in learning Airtable, but I think it's a challenge across the no code uh, tool set. Yeah. So where where can people find the live build stuff? Is that live? Yeah. So Airtable Airtable dot com slash webinars. We're calling them webinars, um, but you have one hundred one and two hundred one. Um, so 101 is a, is a live build of a project tracker, a CRM, and then 201, you know, we continue down that vertical. Uh, so we have CRM 101, then CRM 201, and that's what we're building out initially. Um, and yeah, people seem to love it, which is super exciting. A lot of people are coming, a lot of people are signing up. Um, and I think there's this, there's this thirst for teach me the tool, whether that's at Airtable or, or Zapier or Webflow. Actually, Webflow is really good at it. Um, not that we're not, but uh, Webflow is particularly good at it. Um, so, so I think there's a huge thirst generally around uh, teach me these products. And, and just a note here, it's like, I think about this a lot. I don't think there's a thirst in the no code community, right? Like there's no lack of people like myself and, and MakerPad and, and um, you know other people who are teaching advanced stuff like I want to build this automation. I think there's a huge lack of how do I teach something very simple, right? Like a basic Zap, a you know a basic Airtable functionality. And it's not as much as there's lacking content, right? I can build, hey, you know, create a simple um, issue tracker in Airtable, I can create 20 of those. The issue is how do we actually reach the people who are, or, you know, put, I, I don't want to use the word should, but how do we reach everyday folks or, or people who have never heard of no code um, into that type of content? And I was thinking about this this week before I joined, uh, you know, talking to you. And, and ultimately there is no better place to reach those kinds of people than at no code companies, right? So if you, you know, there's no, more people wanting to learn Webflow or Zapier or, or all of these tools than at the top of the funnel of those companies, right? So as much like 
the the work that you do at MakerPad is very like no code, you know, and company people who are aware of what no code is and have kind of identified the need of patching a few tools together to really get work done. Then you have all these folks in, in signing up for different tools, but are never actually like understanding what it is. And so for me, it's really been interesting around how do you teach, how do you help those people who are just kind of like, I just wanna, I just wanna use this thing. I don't know how it works. Please help me to, to just unlock that feeling, right? That aha moment uh, for folks. And I think there's no better place to, you know, if, if your goal is to get as many of those aha moments for people kind of coming into the no code community, even though they've never heard of the no code community, it's really at the top of those, of those funnels. And so I'm sure you know this of like, um, people come to MakerPad, they sign up and then they're like, oh my God, I, you've solved this big thing for me. Right. Um, and so, whereas before I would be like, using Udemy and, and just mainly catering to people who um, have kind of identified their problem and are kind of specifically looking for resources. Like I want to manage my landing pages in Airtable. Yeah. To write that out, you actually have to be pretty advanced in your right. kind of, in your process of figuring out your issues, right? So uh, that's actually been really exciting uh, around realizing that there is no better place to teach people. Um, I'll call it no code. I don't think anyone outside of this podcast will call it no code. Um, then at, um, you know, whether it's at Airtable or, or other no code companies, there's just so many people who go underserved or who don't ultimately learn um, how these tools work. And that's unfortunate. Yeah. And I mean, it's definitely like a path we were, sprinting down at MakerPad where we'd say, oh, Aaron, can you build like a Substack clone in right. Webflow, Zapier and MemberStack? And then Tom, can you build this like, like the multiverse Zapier stuff? Like we've got all of that stuff. And for a long time, we were just hurdling at the fact that we maybe thought people were learning no code the same pace as we were like discovering new capabilities but mm -hmm. maybe for our own site or for, for whatever else. And there are some people who definitely are in that, in that space. But then equally, like you said, there's like, there's still this 99% 90, 90 of the people who are like, yeah, I just want like a CRM system that I can build myself that works in a way that I want it to work. Right. Where do I go? I, I don't type in how to build this without code. I don't type it in like in whatever way that like some people in no code may think of it of like that. But yeah, we definitely are trying to take a, take a step back and think what is the, what was the, what would a normal quote unquote person try and type in to say, okay, I want to set up a membership business. Like that's probably mm -hmm. it. That's probably the search term. And then it's probably our job now to, to identify, okay, here's like four or five ways to set up membership businesses. And then you'll need yeah. to have like a system that is a database with Airtable that does this, this, and this. So we're definitely looking. I mean, our latest bootcamp is the, the basics of no code. And I think I didn't, I under, underestimated how much people would like that. So I thought, oh, surely everyone here like knows loads of stuff. But we've had like 250 people go into that bootcamp. And it's just like crazy to see how much like people love that side of it and it's very much the basics of no code so yeah. we've got a lot more to do there um for sure so i'd love to hear as we sort of wrap up our last five ten minutes here um i'd love to sort of hear about your thoughts on no code as as the movement and all that like fluffy stuff i know you've got some opinions there and i know you mentioned talking about like the term no code outside of this podcast. And I completely agree with you, but I don't like, I'm interested in what you think. How do we, how do we change that narrative? Yeah, I, this is the controversial part of, of this, yeah. uh, this podcast. Um, I, I, I think, I think I, I, I've been a little difficult on the no code community. I think in general, I think what, what 
how, how I've come to think about it recently, and, and I, think, I do think I, I spend too much time thinking about this because it is somewhat unimportant, but I do think to a certain extent we should think, you know, as someone who um, is deeply involved in this community, like I do love it. It's been amazing. The, the, the people and the feedback that I get is just, is, is just amazing, right? People have questions, we have answers, and in that Twitter world of uh, no code is great. I've, I've had, uh, I've met many people and, and in person and digitally and, and people who write to me and say, hey, I saw what you did. Here's how I, you know, remixed it. And then I reuse that on another live stream. And that's been amazing. And I think, you know, the challenge that I see with, with is that it's a very um, limited world, right? So no co- what I call no code Twitter, uh, uh, Twitter is 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 not is not no code generally right so i think you know what i love about no code is its ability to shorten an outcome so let's say you want to get a website up you can do that very quickly um it's it's not complexity for complexity's sake uh and i think a lot of uh no code twitter is look at this really complex thing i've built that i'm ultimately not going to go through the motions of uh promoting or of making a real thing. And personally, I initially really like complexity for complexity's sake. I really like building out really complex stuff because the outcome was just, you know, standing it up. What I realized is that outside of Twitter, you know, people have a goal. They just wanna like, I wanna have a membership website and I really don't wanna spend time on it, right? And so, um, you know, their simplicity is the goal or the outcome is, is what we want. But now that I, the more I think about it is that there's this really cool interplay between those two worlds, right? So sometimes to do a membership website, you actually need that like, that multi-reference Zapier, right? And, and so someone has to go through that process and figure out how that works and kind of promote it uh, within that world to be able to create that quote unquote simple website. That being said, like, I wish we would spend more time thinking about what is it that I'm trying to do here, right? Am I just building for building's sake? Am I building a clone because I think it's interesting and that's fine? Um, but really thinking of if we want to help people, um, you know, we want to publicize the existence of our world and publicize how awesome it is that you can connect things really easily, uh, we should spend less time um, on building complex things and more time on helping people just learn simple stuff. And, you know, so, so, so that's one thing I do. I, I do love the community. I think it's great. Um, I've tried to be a little more, um, a little more simple in, in what I show and, in, in, in the type of content, the types of automations that I show um, in just trying to reach a broader audience. And I think there's no better example than the work that I now do at Airtable. Um, you know, what I show is usually very, very simple. And I think, you know, on a daily basis at Airtable, I have probably, I reach, I reach more people than I have, uh, on, on, in terms of aha moments than, than the year yeah. plus I spent not, not saying that, 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 that's an, a, a true equivalence, uh, but it's 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 been rewarding to to myself to be able to show very simple things and people are like oh my god that's great like you're gonna save me so much time I'm like oh this is like basic basic functionality yeah. um, so but but both are valuable yeah it, it's something that I struggle with too in thinking like why why is someone building that for its own sake and then often i see like these complex things built for that same community so it sort of like stays in the loop where i'm like no no, let's try and tell everyone about the benefits of no code because it is it's that job to be done that we're trying to get to i don't care if it's like you type in without code or no code in the middle bit it's just that end bit that we're trying to get to but i think it's just always going to be something that is like a side effect a good one i think which is like okay now you can go and build something 
really simple or really complex. It's just a matter of how you figure out whether there's content there and whether you can figure out how to do that. And people are going to build it because just because they can. Like mm -hmm. when I was working at Product Hunt, it would like sometimes get me down. I'm like, oh, there's like the fifteenth dating app I've seen this week is on, <laughs> or there's like another weather app, and I had like there's a run running joke of Ben hates every weather app, and it was like you could never please me if you saw something like that. And so some of the time I'll just like be really just like f for no real big reason other than I just thought, well, why can't people, if you've got the ability to build something, build something more meaningful. I think, and but, but equally it's like, well, if you're building something that like helps you learn something or you get something out of it, like build whatever the fuck you want. Like that's not right. my thing to tell anyone about like what right. I think about it. And yeah, and I, I think this is the challenge. Like ultimately uh, coming back to the initial point, like do, do what you enjoy in no code. And, yeah. and I think, you know, it's this, and, and I think Lacey once said like, who cares? Yeah. Um, and I, and I, and I, and I was like, I care, but you know, frankly, I, I, I that's fine. Like if, like I spend way too much time thinking about, um, you know, why am I, creating this for whom am i creating this uh but i think ultimately that you know the more the better um in and i think as people create um you know you get to a point where you say okay well okay now that now that i do enjoy doing this what you know what is the next step here um so you know for me it's always been okay well this is interesting this is fun to me but how does it reach more people and and usually what that is, is do something simpler um, or, you know, don't word it in a way where you're talking about how to do multi-reference reference fields in, in Webflow yeah. through Zapier. But what is the goal of that? Well, that's like multi-product, like being able to multi-categorize products and create landing pages by category. That's a more relevant struggle for most people than how do I do like, right? So, so, backing up and saying, what is it that we're solving? And is, is what I'm showing and what I'm, what I'm talking about, the, the actual issue that people are facing, right? So when you step back and you say, actually, I want to create a page for each category. Well, you know, Zapier and multi-reference fields might be one solution, but are there simpler ones or are there other ones? And for me, that's really been a good way of saying, okay, well, don't show the the automation show the goal and maybe there are three four different ways of doing that and pick the simpler ones um, yeah 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 and like yeah i saw that um or listened to that podcast with Lacey saying like who who cares what it's called and i'm with you and i'm like i do care what it's called but also i'm with Lacey and thinking well yeah why do i care that much that i feel like i have to like spend mental energy on the fact that i'm annoyed people call it no code like call it what the fuck you like it doesn't right but here we are yeah here we are exactly. spending spending precious minutes we're like meta we're not even talking yeah. about like the name itself we're talking about should we talk about the name and like you'll never find someone more interested in these conversations than myself right yeah. like i can i i spend probably more time thinking about these things than you know is generally acceptable right no one should spend this much time thinking about this like there's i have so many drafts of newsletters i never sent around thinking of, you know, why do we do this? Why do we think that way? Um, and so I think there's a great balance. Like people don't care and that's great. Um, and then people like you and myself who do care um, in, in there's a good mix. So ultimately I think it works out in the end. Yeah, I think it's fine. And I think I only care because I just worry about what it's gonna be called in X many years when it is more popular. I don't want this name necessarily to stick. But here, you know, like maybe maybe we'll end on this. Like outside of our Twitter world, no code doesn't mean anything, right? Exactly. So, and in like you know, I, I was thinking about this. Like I have colleagues who are just amazing, amazing, quote unquote, no coders. They don't ever use that word. You'll never find that on their CV. And you know, when I speak to other you know maybe no code startups or things like that, I'm saying don't 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 target no code folks. Um, try to find people who have the underlying 
uh, characteristics of a no-coder. So people who need to automate, who have a goal, usually that goal might be marketing, might be process, uh, workflow wizards or whatever, even though don't use the word wizards. Um, um, and so ultimately they'll never, I don't think they'll ever call themselves no coders because no, no code isn't a goal in and of itself. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's about what is it, what is their job? Their job is usually marketing, it's process, it's, 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 uh, operations. Um, but you know, the people I work with are the people who, uh, um, you know, who haven't heard of our world are just amazing at it. I show them parabola and they're like, Oh my God, it, within three days, they're coming back and they're like, look at, look at the eight things I've done in it, but they don't go on Twitter. They don't do these things. And so, um, you know, I, I think of those folks and how do we, how do we, um, keep reaching those, those people and, and keep pushing um, our, our world forward. And whether we call it no code or, or not, um, they'll never call it no code, uh, yeah. which, which I think is good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that's, uh, that's a good point. And yeah, let's end it there. I think uh, it's been an awesome conversation as always. Uh, where can yeah. people go and, and find you online? Uh, yeah. So best place is Twitter. Uh, despite my knocking of it, uh, Aaron Kaur, A-R-O-N-K-O-R on Twitter. Uh, you can find the Essential Guide to Airtable at aatt.io. Automate all the things uh, acronym. I, I can't afford the domain. Um, and yeah, otherwise, you know, uh, Airtable.com slash webinars. That's what we're doing short term. Uh, I'm pretty easy to find online. Uh, I have the Automate All the Things YouTube channel. So, so yeah, feel free to reach out. Um, um, yeah, thanks, thanks to you, Ben, for, for taking the time. And, and I'll actually take last moment to thank you for, uh, you know, I don't think I would be where I am today, how, whatever that means, uh, if, uh, if you hadn't reached out. So I remember a little backstory here, maybe we'll end here. I remember writing to Ben after I wrote The Essential Guide to Airtable and saying, hey, you know, a part of why I created that was, uh, you know, thanks to uh, Ben's, tweets and I didn't know Ben at that moment he actually responded and, and that's how uh, a lot of this MakerPad stuff started or or to me joining MakerPad anyway so huge thanks to you and uh, thanks for everything you do for the community I really appreciate that thanks so much um, cheers man